وأقول في القرآن ما جاءت به آياته فهو الكريم المنزل وأقول قال الله جل جلاله والمصطفى الهادي ولا أتأول الحمد لله رب العالمين له الحمد الحسن والثناء الجميل وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن سيدنا ونبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه والتابعين لهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد وإن the explanation of the kitab أخلاق حملة القرآن written by الإمام أبو بكر محمد بن الحسين الآجري رحمه الله we stopped at the verse وأنيبوا إلى ربكم وأسلموا له من قبل أن يأتيكم العذاب ثم لا تنصرون واتبعوا أحسن ما أنزل إليكم من ربكم من قبل أن يأتيكم العذاب بغتة وأنتم لا تشعرون and I pointed out an إشكال that has come to some people regarding this verse uh, where Allah says واتبعوا follow أحسن ما أنزل إليكم follow the best that has been sent on to you so some people they said does that mean that the Quran uh, there's parts of it which are not good and etc so the response to this inshallah ta'ala is going to be brought by the author rahimahullah he's going to respond to it and Imam al-Ajurri responds to that point he says قال محمد بن الحسين and محمد بن الحسين is Imam al-Ajurri and as we can see all the time the author rahimahullah brings a couple of verses or he brings a verse or maybe even a couple of verses and then he puts a little ta'liq a little commentary on it or a little, exp- a little explanation on it and he extracts a benefit out of it. Al Imam al Ajurri. That's the beauty of this book. He says, Fakullu kalami rabbina, all of the speech of our Lord, Allah Azza wa Jalla, is hasanun liman tala. All of it is good. And all of the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is good. For the one who reads it, it's all good. Waliman is tama'a ilayhi, and the person who listens to the Quran, all of the Quran is good for him. Anyone who reads the Quran, all of it is good for him. And anyone who listens to the Quran, all of it is good. وَإِنَّمَا هَذَا But what this verse is referring to, Wallahu a'lam, the author says, Allah knows best, is صِفَةُ قَوْمٍ إِذَا سَمِعُوا الْقُرْآنَ It's talking about the description of a people. إِذَا سَمِعُوا الْقُرْآنَ When they hear the Quran, يَتَّبِعُونَ مِنَ الْقُرْآنِ They follow from the Quran. أَحْسَنَ مَا يَتَقَرَّبُونَ بِهِ إِلَى اللَّهِ عَزَّ وَجَلَّ the best of that which will bring them closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What this verse is saying, وَاتَّبِعُوا فَلَوْ أَحْسَنَ مَا أُنزِلَ إِلَيْكُمْ مِنْ رَبِّكُمْ The best of what has been sent down on your Lord means that some verses is applicable to a particular person and it's the means for them to get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That verse is a means for you to get closer to Allah. And so you, for you, for you, for you, this verse is the best verse for you. And another person, this verse might be the best verse for them in this particular situation of getting closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But in but the Quran, all of it is the best. And the whole Quran is the best. Okay? They follow. Those, the, the Quran he mentions, it's a group of people he said that when they hear the Quran, they follow from the Quran Ahsana, the greatest and the best ما يتقربون, that which gets them closer to Bihi إلى الله عز وجل, that gets them closer to Allah تبارك وتعالى مما دلهم عليه مولاهم الكريم that which their Lord, their Mawla, Allah عز وجل uh, indicated to them and showed them the word Mawla in the Arabic language, it's used as three meanings. The word Mawla. It's sometimes used as Al-Jawad, the one who gives and is generous. Sometimes it's used as Al-Aziz. And Al-Aziz means Al-Ghalibu Fi Abrihi. The one that whenever he wants something, it will happen in the way he wants it, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And also the word uh, al karim can also mean Al-Safuh, the one who forgives and pardons his uh, slaves. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Qur'an he has sent down, all of it is good. 
the whole entire Quran, all of it is good for the person who recites it, for the person who uh, listens to it. But the people are not the same. There are a group of people who are struggling with the wajibat. For them, what verses is applicable to them? The verses which tell them to follow the obligatory things. That's the best thing for them. And they shouldn't be considering or if they shouldn't even be looking into the verses that are talking about the voluntary acts and the supererogatory acts because they at this moment are not even doing that which is obligatory. Another person on the other hand has mastered the obligatory acts in a they, 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 are, I mean, they are fulfilling the obligatory acts and they are making sure that they pray the salawat on its timing correctly and everything. What verses is now applicable to this person? The verses which are uh, applicable to this person is uh, the voluntary acts and the voluntary verses. Does that make sense, brothers? That's what is meant by وَاتَّبِعُوا فَلَوْ أَحْسَنَ مَا أُنزِلَ إِلَيْكُمْ مِنْ رَبِّكُمْ Follow the best which has come to you from your Lord Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala مِنْ قَبْلِ أَنْ يَأْتِيَكُمُ الْعَذَابُ Before the punishment comes بَغْتَةً suddenly وَأَنْتُمْ لَا تَشْعُرُونَ And you are unaware of it And you are unaware of it The author rahimahullah then says يَطْلُبُونَ بِذَلِكَ رِضَاهُ They are hoping uh, In this action that they are doing to please their Lord Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala وَيَرْجُونَ رَحْمَتَهُ And they are hoping for His mercy subhanahu wa ta'ala سَمِعُوا اللَّهَ عَزَّ وَجَلَّ قَالَ They heard that Allah tabarak wa ta'ala said وَإِذَا قُرِئَ الْقُرْآنُ When the Qur'an is read فَاسْتَمِعُوا listen to it فَاسْتَمِعُوا لَهُ listen to it وَأَنصِتُوا and be silent لَعَلَّكُمْ تُرْحَمُونَ So you can receive the mercy of your Lord. The author, what he's saying is these are the, this is, this ayah, وَاتَّبِعُوا مَا أُنزِلَ إِلَيْكُمْ مِنْ رَبِّكُمْ is referring to a people. They heard the Qur'an. They are following from the Qur'an the best things that will get them closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Those things Allah instructed them to do. All of it, they are doing it for what reason? They are doing it to please their Lord, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَيَرْجُونَ رَحْمَتَهُ And they are hoping for the mercy of their Lord. سَمِعُوا الله عز وجل. They heard that Allah wa ta'ala said, وَإِذَا قُرِئَ الْقُرْآنِ That when the Qur'an is recited, فَاسْتَمِعُوا لَهُ Listen to it. And there are people, when the Qur'an is recited, they're silent. They tell everybody to be silent. Silent, silent. Let's, let's listen. فَاسْتَمِعُوا لَهُ They listen to it. وَأَنصِتُوا لَعَلَّكُمْ تُرْحَمُونَ and they are silent. They don't say a word. They just listen. This leads them to what? The mercy of Allah. Allah's rahmah comes down to them. Allah has mercy on them. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Author then, Imam al-Ajurriyu carried on saying, فَكَانَ حُسْنُ اسْتِمَاعِهِمْ يَبْعَثُهُمْ عَلَى التَّذَكُّرِ فِي مَا لَهُمْ وَعَلَيْهِمْ He said, their beautiful listening. These people are very good. They're good listeners. Their excellent listening has led them to what? Has pushed them towards what? على التذكر in remembering what is for them and what is against them. When they listen to the Quran, this listening leads them to, pushes them towards the things that are for them and the things that are against them. وَسَمِعُوا اللَّهَ عَزَّ وَجَلَّ قَالْ They heard that Allah Taala said فَذَكِّرْ بِالْقُرْآنِ مَنْ يَخَافُ وَعِيدٌ Remind with the Qur'an Muhammad مَنْ يَخَافُ وَعِيدٌ for the ones who are fearful of the warnings of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. They are what? They are fearful of the warnings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then the reminders that are found in the Qur'an and the warnings that are in the Qur'an will only benefit those who are fearful, those who are scared. Ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah, he said, 
فَالْإِيمَانُ بِالْوَعْدِ وَالْوَعِيدِ Believing in the warnings and believing in the promises that are in the Qur'an. وَذِكْرُهُ شَرْطٌ فِي الْإِنْتِفَاعِ بِالْعِضَاتِ وَالْآيَاتِ وَالْعِبَرِ and the reminders that are in the Qur'an. يعني believing in the warnings, believing in the promises, believing in the reminders that are in the Qur'an is shartun, it's a condition. يعني it's a prerequisite. A prerequisite that's needed from you before you can benefit from the Qur'an is to believe that first of all in the warnings. You believe in these promises. You believe in this warning? Yes. You believe there's Jahannam? Yes. You believe in there is a Jannah? Yes. You, re- you believe in these, war- these reminders? And- yes. Once you believe in that, this is a prerequisite, it was a condition. He said, You will benefit. Bil'idhati in those reminders. Wal ayati in those verses. Wal ibar and the lessons that are in those ayats. Yastahilu husuluhu bidun. And without it, you're not going to benefit. If you don't even believe in this warning, if you don't even believe in Adabu Jahannam, if you don't believe in Jannah, you do not believe in these reminders Allah is giving, then Ibn al Qayyim said, You're not going to benefit from it. You will not benefit from it. So that's what the author is saying, Ali Babu al Ajri, Rahimullah, as well. Waqad Akbar Allah Azza wa Jalla. Allah told us, now please focus here. The author now is swiftly moving on to another creation of Allah that are also amongst them righteous ones and criminals. And how did those who listen to the Quran from those creation, from that creation, from that creation, the ones who listen to the Quran, how did it affect them? How did it benefit them? And where did they where did that lead them to? That's what the author is now going to go into. He said, Wa akhbarana Allahu Azza wa Jalla. Allah told us, Anil Jin meet the jinn. في حسن استماعهم القرآن Their excellent manners and their way, their excellent way of listening to the Qur'an. Allah told us about that. He told us about the jinns also who listened to the Qur'an, who made sure they gave their full concentration to the Qur'an. وَاسْتِجَابَتِهِمْ لِمَا نَدَبَهُمْ إِلَيْهِ and they obeying, and they, them obeying, yani the jinns, obeying the requests that the Qur'an instructed them. They obeyed it. ثُمَّ رَجَعُوا إِلَىٰ قَوْمِهِمْ Once they listened, pay attention. These jinns, they listened to the Qur'an. When they listened to the Qur'an, they followed what it instructed them. وَاسْتِجَابَتِهِمْ لِمَا نَدَبَهُمْ إِلَيْهِ They followed the instructions and the requests that the Qur'an gave them. ثُمَّ رَجَعُوا إِلَىٰ قَوْمِهِمْ And they went back to their people. فَوَعَضُوهُمْ بِمَا سَمِعُوا مِنَ الْقُرْآنِ بِأَحْسَنِ بِأَحْسَنِ مَا يَكُونُ مِنَ الْمَوْعِضَةِ They went back to their people. فَوَعَضُوهُمْ And they reminded them. بِمَا سَمِعُوا In the things that they heard. They went back to their people and they told them about what they heard. مِنَ الْقُرْآنِ From the Qur'an. بِأَحْسَنِ مَا يَكُونُ مِنَ الْمَوْعِضَ and they mentioned to them in the best of the reminders there is. They gave a reminder to their people. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent Nabiullah Muhammad as a prophet for two people. I'm a two kind of creation. Nabiullah Muhammad was sent out as a prophet to two types of creation. And these two creations are the ins and the jinn. As there are in the ins, salih and talih, yani a righteous one and a criminal. There is also the same in the jinns. They have righteous ones and they have criminals and evildoers. The Quran, the way it affects the ins, the humans, and it changes their life and brings them salvation and prosperity and happiness and joy and tranquility and dismisses or gets rid of distress and agony and depression and hardship and etc. It does the same for the jinn. It does the same for the jinn. When the humans chose to listen to the Quran and they chose to follow the Quran, it changed their life. 
revolutionize their life. And we mentioned some of those ayats that the author rahimahullah mentioned. Um, now we're going to go into another creature, the jinn. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he was sent to the jinn and he was also sent to the ins, the human beings. As for the way that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to call the jinns is a matter that the scholars discussed. Because we know the way that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gave da'wah to the ins, the humans, is uh, well known. It's in the seerah books, we know how the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam called Abu Bakr and Umar and Uthman and all of them to Islam. We know that. But how did he do it sallallahu alayhi wa sallam for the jinns? Then this is an issue that goes back to the ayah إِنَّهُ يَرَاكُمْ هُوَ وَقَبِيرُهُ مِنْ حَيْثُ لَا تَرَوْنَهُ That the jinns can see the humans. And that is why Allah Taala made the jinns to see the humans. So they could see the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and pray and they learn from him. They learn the da'wah and the message from him Alayhi Salatu Wasallam. They can see him. And uh, whereas the humans, we can't see the jinns. That's a world that's been locked off from us. The hikmah in Allah. Because of a wisdom he Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala knows. Here this ayah, I'm sorry, here the point of the author, here the point of the author is that the jinns, they listened to the Qur'an. They made sure they focused and gave their full attention to the Qur'an when it was recited. And they obeyed the message that the Qur'an was given. They obeyed it and they listened to it. And then they went to their people. Yani the jinns that came to the Prophet ﷺ, they went back to their people. And when they went to their people, they gave da'wah to them. They reminded them of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that which they heard from the Qur'an. And Allah mentioned their story here. Allah tabarak wa ta'ala, he said, قَالَ اللَّهُ عَزَّ وَجَلَّ قُلْ أُوحِيَ إِلَيَّ أَنَّهُ اسْتَمَعَ نَفَرٌ مِّنَ الْجِنِّ فَقَالُوا إِنَّا سَمِعْنَا قُرْآنًا عَجَبًا يَهْدِي إِلَى الرُّشْدِ فَآمَنَّا بِهِ وَلَنْ نُشْرِكَ بِرَبِّنَا أَحَدًا These jinns, their story was mentioned in this surah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he said to us, قُلْ Say to them, Muhammad. Say to these people, Muhammad, Uhiya ilayya, a revelation was sent unto me. Allah revealed on me something. What is it that Allah revealed on the Prophet? That a group of the jinns listened to the Prophet. Who were these jinns that came and listened to the Prophet? Our Messenger. A group of jinns called Jinnun Nasibin. They were referred to as what? Jinnun Nasibin. Jinnun Nasibin, they lived in between Sham and Iraq, a place called Nasibin, that's where they lived. Al Imam al Qurtubi in his tafsir, he takes another opinion. He says that these jinns that came and listened to the Prophet وسلم, are the jinns who used to work for Iblis. Iblis had a group of jinns who used to work for him. The majority of the army of Iblis, they were the ones that came to the Prophet and listened to him. And why did they come and listen to him? Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The reason why they came then they listened to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is mentioned in the surah itself. Allah mentions to us subhanahu wa ta'ala that the jinns they used to climb each other, so they used to go on top of each other, and they used to go to the sky. They pop their head into the sama and they would listen to the message of Allah that He gives to the angels. And they will then go down to pass it to each other, and the bottom is the fortune teller, who would then um, convey what he supposedly claimed that he knows from the unseen. The jinns, each one would add one lie, one lie extra, one, one, one. So when it comes to him, 99 of them are lies and one is true. The one true is the one that the top one mentioned. So the jinns used to do that. They climb on top of each other and they go to the sky and they will get the information and they will go. One day they went up and they found it muli'at. The sky was filled with what? The sky was filled with hurras, powerful gods. And these gods were what? Angels. They guarded the sama. 
And the second thing it had was there was shuhuban, which was powerful beams were thrown at them. So they said to each other, this has only happened li amrin azim. Oh, this is a big thing. This is not a normal issue for the sky to be locked off like that and for there to be uh, these beams thrown at us. Uh, we can't even listen to anything. It's only because of a great matter. So they said to each other, Let's go disperse on the earth and find out what's happening on the earth. Something's happening. So the jinns, they traveled and they traveled and they traveled and they came to a place where the Prophet Sallallahu was called Batnul Nakhla was where the Prophet was and he was praying The jinns, they came, they, all those years they've been trying to find out who it was and they finally came on top of the Prophet Sallallahu and they found him. The Prophet Sallallahu there's a narration mentioned that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Abu Huraira mentioned this. Abu Huraira mentioned, he said, and Imam al-Bukhari mentioned this in his Sahih on the authority of Abu Huraira. Abu Huraira said, Kana yahmilu ma'an Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam idawatan. Abu Huraira was carrying a water pot for the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Li wudu'ihi, so the Prophet can do his ablution, his wudu'. Wa hajati and his call of nature. Fabaynama huwa yatba'uhu, Abu Huraira was following the Prophet. And the Prophet was walking and Abu Huraira was following him. Then the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi said, Man hada, who's that person following me? It was night time. So the Prophet said, who's this person following me? Faqala ana, it's me, Abu Huraira. It's me, Abu Huraira. What we take from this is that the Prophet didn't know the unseen. He doesn't know, he's not Alim al -Ghayb. He's asking Abu Huraira, who is this person following me? Because it's pitch dark, he can't see Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So he says, who is this following me? Abu Huraira says, it's me or Messenger of Allah. Then the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said to him, Ibghini ahjaran ahmiluha fi tarafi thawbi hatta wada'atu ila jambihi. The Prophet said to him, go Abu Huraira and get me stones. Avoid two things. Do not bring me bones and do not bring me animal dogs. Don't bring me those two. Just bring me stones. So Abu Huraira went, and he collected stones on his robe, at the edge of his robes. And then he said, Hatta wada'atu ila jambihi. I placed them all on the Prophet's side. Because the Prophet was doing his call of nature. So he put it all next to the Prophet and he didn't look at him. Thumman sarafti he said, I left the Prophet. Hatta, I waited for him. Hatta ila faraga. I waited for him to finish his call of nature. Mashaytu ma'ahu. I then walked with him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Faqultu, I said to him, Ma balul azmi wa rawthati. What's the story of the bones and the dong? Why did you not allow me to get those two for you? Why did you specifically want stones? The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said, "Huma min ta'am al jinni." They are from the uh, the bones are from the food of the jinns. Our brothers, the Prophet said in another narration, our believing brothers from the jinn, that's where they eat their food from. The Prophet said, A delegation from the jinns of Nasibin came to me, the Prophet said. And the Prophet said, They were great, honorable jinns, righteous jinns. They came to me, the Prophet said. A delegation. They asked me for food. They asked me if they can eat the food of the humans. And the Prophet then said, I supplicated to Allah lahum for them. Allah yamurru, that they do not come across, those jinns, do, they do not see bi'admin a bone, wala rawthatin, and even an animal dung, illa wajadu alayha ta'aman, except that they find food on it. So we're not allowed to use bones and dongs because Allah changes those two food for the jinns who believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But what I want from the story is, that these jinns were the ones that came to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and mentioned in Surah Al-Jinn. I'm going to inshallah ta'ala conclude there. Uh, anything I might have said that was wrong or incorrect is from me and Shaytan and Allah and his messenger are both free from it. Subhanak Allahumma bihamdik, ashadu an la ilaha illallah, astaghfiruka atubu ilayhi. Assalamu alaikum. If you're enjoying these videos and you'd like to keep up to date with all of the courses we're going to be running, 
make sure you head over to amau at home.com.